الله وعلى آله وصحبه من ولا اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا أنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم وتب علينا أنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحانك لا نفسي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر وأنت على كل شيء قدير اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما واجعل التفرق بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تدع فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم آمين والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصل بالحق وتواصل بالصبر in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most compassion, the most merciful all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he who is guided by the will of Allah no one can misguide him and he who is misguided no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh today is lesson number 49 alhamdulillah uh, we are on the 20th of September 2022. You never know, maybe I will, <laughs> I will be listening to this video 20 years later and you will forget <laughs> when we didn't say this, subhanAllah. By the way, I have some recordings on my computer about 15 years ago and I forgot completely when it exactly and where. So sometimes maybe it's good to, to, to record inside the video. I, I think I, I, I need to do that. Anyway. By the way, Doctor, there's two playlists. There's ah. old playlist. You remember the old tafsir? Ah. Yes, don't forget that. I'm talking about the, uh, something much, much more older. Okay, today our main topic is Ibrahim السلام, and Ismail. السلام, okay? Abraham and Ishmael. When they were first mentioned in the Quran in chapter Al Baqarah according to our uh, to the order of the Quran in chapter Al Baqarah. We have a number of ayat, so I think it will take us more than one session. So Ibrahim and Ismail. The general context, now you are aware, of. we mentioned many things. We have one of the greatest repeatable things in our context, basically Jews, Christians, Muslims. As, as you know, I will keep always reminding. Now we have this lesson about the Quran. Quran is the constitution of Muslims. Muslims, they are the final part of a long chain of believers. <laughs> started from Adam, ended up by Muhammad as prophets and messengers. However, all those who preceded us, and there were thousands and millions, all of them, they were believers. Because we Muslims believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent many prophets and many messengers before us. We have no idea how many thousands of years this take, but we have at least Hadith Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have an evidence that there is a multi of them by the Quran, which is وَرُسُلًا لَمْ نَقْصُصْهُمْ عَلَيْكَ Allah indicates clearly that we have provided you, O Muhammad, with the knowledge of some of them. However, some of them we have not told you about. So this is the clear-cut indication about that we don't know. In the hadith, Prophet Muhammad mentioned that the prophets, they are more than 120,000. <coughs> Messengers, about 315. The messenger and the prophet, both of them, they receive revelation. <laughs> the messenger comes with the same religion that all prophets come, which is in faith and values, no change. From Adam to Muhammad, more than 100,000 prophets and messengers, they came with one religion in terms of faith and values, no change, no Darwinism in faith, <laughs> okay? However, the change is what when we say Rusul, practical technicalities, which we call it in our Islamic terminology, Sharia. In English, law. In Hebrew, Torah. By the way, the word Torah means the law, which means Sharia. <laughs> so when someone tells you, I have a problem with, with Sharia law, <laughs> he knows nothing about what he's talking about. <laughs> because, okay, anyway. So just to let you, now, Allah decided in this Quran to give us some lessons about some of the groups who preceded us. The closest to us, Jews and Christians. We as Muslims believe that Jews in their time and any group of followers of a prophet or a messenger in their time, if they accepted the message of Allah through that messenger or prophet, we call them what? Muslims. And we have many evidence in the Quran about that. 
about Yusuf alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, many of them, they were literally calling themselves what? Muslims. Anyway, so now why Ibrahim? Now why Ibrahim alayhi salam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Ibrahim and I will recite, I will recite the Arabic now text of the Quran. Then I will give you an idea what distinguishes Ibrahim alayhi salam in our faith. Then will we affirm this by highlighting the Quranic verses line by line, concept by concept, and three times through the other time finishes, inshallah. And it will take at least two sessions, if not more. Let me just read very quickly the verses. A'udhu billahi shaita rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahim. وَإِذِ بِتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنَّ قَالَ إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إماما قال ومن ذريتي قال لا ينال عهد الظالمين وإذ جعلنا البيت مثابة للناس وأمنا واتخذوا من مقام إبراهيم مصلى وعهدنا إلى إبراهيم وإسماعيل أن طهر بيتي للطائفين والعاكفين والركع السجود وإذ قال إبراهيم رب اجعل هذا بلدا آمنا وارزق أهله من الثمرات من آمن منهم بالله واليوم الآخر قال ومن كفر فأمتعه قليلا ثم أضطره إلى عذاب النار وبئس المصير وإذ يرفع إبراهيم القواعد من البيت وإسماعيل ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم ربنا واجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن ذريتنا أمة مسلمة لك وأرنا مناسكنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا وابعث فيهم رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم Do you remember this? Or it wasn't the seerah? It's the message. ربنا وابعث فيهم رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياتك ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة ويزكيهم إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم ومن يرغب عن ملة إبراهيم إلا من سفه نفسه ولقد اصطفيناه في الدنيا وإنه في الآخرة لمن الصالحين إذ قال له ربه أسلم قال أسلمت لرب العالمين. This is the paragraph that we will deal with. This is about seven or eight ayat about Ibrahim. By the way, Ibrahim alayhi salam was mentioned in more than five chapters, not just here, in many places. Different angles, it has a great incidence. Sallallahu Alaihi But now let's we need to know the following. Ibrahim alayhi salam has a specific title which is Khalilullah. And by the way, many people they don't know that in more than one Sahih hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa indicated clearly that the only two people who deserved the title Khalilullah, and I will explain what's the meaning of Khalilullah, are just Ibrahim alayhi salam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Just among the prophets and messengers. Now, in a hadith sahih, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he said about Ibrahim alayhi salam that he is Khalilullah, قال, وَأَنَا خَلِيلُ Now, what's the mean of Khalilullah? Khalilullah means, the word Khalil, from al khulla wal-takhallul. It's in Arabic linguistic, when you go to the lexicons, it tells that when someone has been loved to the utmost, highest level of love. So when we say Ibrahim Khalilullah means Ibrahim deserved the highest level of love from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Khalilullah we don't mention this a lot because Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has another some title which is much more famous. But in Hadith Sahih, they deserve it, which means that both two they had a special status of the highest rank, highest level of love from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right. Now Ibrahim Alayhi Salam has a very rich story, and by the way, and Ibrahim Alayhi Salam in specific has a specific story because we have a lot of shared things with Jews and Christians about Ibrahim alayhi salam. And actually, actually, to be honest with you, three religions, they are fighting to attribute themselves to Ibrahim alayhi salam. <laughs> There's a real fight worldwide. That's why some of them, they call the Abrahamic religions. Even though we Muslims, we don't recognize Abrahamic religion. We recognize Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, <laughs> chronological, that was then abrogated, nusikhat, 
Next new version by Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ. Then it was abrogated by the final decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the final messenger. That's why we, we talk about Old Testament and New Testament, last testament. However, however, many people, they would love to use the Abrahamic religions. Now, why Abraham? Now, from one angle, Ibrahim alayhi salam, you know, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he is the father of Ismail and Ishaq. Ishmael and Ishaq. Now, Ismail is bigger 14 years according to the Torah from Ishaq. Okay? So, however, there are two sons. Now, from Ismail alayhi salam, from the decent ship of Ismail, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. From the decent ship of Ishaq, Yaqub alayhi salam, Israel. From the decent ship of Yaqub alayhi salam, Yusuf. <laughs> From the decent ship of Yaqub and Yusuf, Musa <laughs> and Harun alayhi salam. And all prophets and messengers came from this side. So, the, to the best of our knowledge, we have no details about if some prophets or messengers between Ismail alayhi salam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. Okay? But we know for sure, definitely, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam from the decent ship of Ismail. So basically, the, the big three heavenly religions that we know, they go directly, three of them, to Ibrahim alayhi salam, from one angle. Okay? Now, طيب, what was one of the main reasons that Ibrahim alayhi salam has this high special status in the sight of Allah? And the Quran itself, when you look to the Quran, we have an amazing, amazing. I will be reciting some of them. Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ibrahim He was tested with some commandments. Many commandments. On top of the commandments, the slaughtering of his son. We can I mean, we have many, 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 let's say, stats that made him. And we will be dealing with them by details now. The greatest two could be when he stand, when he decided to stand against shirk and polytheism compared with Tawheed with his people. And he was alone, just a young man. You know, historically, he was living in what we know now in Iraq. Historically, it is known that it's Or. Or now it's part of Turkey. <laughs> It used to be a historical part of Iraq. Our, regardless. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was challenging by himself a full ummah. <laughs> Standing alone. And we know, we will come to this, to the debate between them, when they were insisting to worship. And the big stats between him and his father, Azar. With Qala Ibrahim al Azar, okay? The father, the Abi he Azar. We know the debates. Now, when he insisted to keep calling them peacefully, just holding the truth powerfully, they decided simply, and this is basically the nature of falsehood, al batil during the history. When you keep arguing with haq, with the truth, they can't stand. Immediately, they use what? Physical power to get rid of you. They can't stand. Now they claim, let's argue, let's discuss, let's have a discussion, let's have a freedom of speech. But when you say the truth, if your truth will prevail, immediately, some during the history, they will use the power against you. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, as a young man, challenging a full ummah of mushrikeen in his time, it ended up, they decided to throw him into the fire. Can you imagine? He accepted now. Try by the way. To imagine someone just holding the truth, he could have said, Khalas, no, no, wallahi, I have no problem with you, just and you escape, ya Allah, you know, I was so weak, I was afraid of the hellfire. And by the way, by the way, we have this license, we have this ruksa, it's a divine law, which means when you are in a very difficult status, okay, I will kill you, say something about the Prophet Muhammad. You have the license to say, but as, as long as your heart is not accepting this. Someone will kill you unless if she says something against Islam. You have the right to say it, but your heart, Allah knows your heart. You are forced, you are oppressed, you are tortured. And it could happen to any one of us. 
He refused. They threw him in the fire. And we know, قُلْنَا يَا نَارُ كُونِ بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا Allah is the one who created the fire with the nature that it burns. Who decided to let the fire not burn? <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْنَا يَا نَارُ كُونِ بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا To be cold and peace. No harm. طب how? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is number one. Number two. The biggest, the biggest test when he saw, you know, Look, and we know that prophets and messengers, be careful. This is a revelation to prophets and messengers. Has nothing to do with regulations. And by the way, it's mentioned in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, not just in Islam. Because it's a little bit tricky when you say, what? Especially for these small kids. How come? This is a very special status where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is managing his way with the Prophet and Messenger. The same thing applies to Musa al Khadr. Are you with me? Musa and Al Khadr. What happened when they killed the young man? It's, 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 it could be similar like sending a virus to a, a, to a small kid and he is dead because of the virus. Who sent the virus? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who stopped his life? Who stopped his heart? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who said, etc. My point. Now, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he saw in his dream, because we know in our faith that the dream for the prophets and messengers, it's a direct revelation from Allah. Okay? And this is not applicable on us. Be careful. Be careful. Just oppose. A dream is not a revelation from Allah to every one of us. Because <laughs> sometimes... You wake up, I saw in the dream that I'm doing such and such. So you go, no, no, be careful. <laughs> okay? We are talking about very unique, special status between Allah and the specific prophets and messengers. This, by the will of Allah, we have nothing to do with this. For us, dreams could be just the shaitan is playing in my mind, could be just the psychological, you know, reflection of what I have seen, of what I'm suffering, and it could be a vision from Allah. It has a, a lot of details. It could be with some conditions. Now, let's come back. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he saw in the dream that Allah is commanding him to slaughter his son. Look now, we have many lessons about this. He immediately, he went to his son, I was given the commandment to slaughter you. Look now to the amazing reaction. قال يا أبا تفعل ما تؤمر ستجدني إن شاء الله من الصابرين. And by the way, this is mentioned in the Torah. The idea, very close mention in the Bible and the Quran about this. So he was commanded. قال فلما أسلم when both of them submitted to the will of their Lord. وتله للجبين about to apply. قال ناديناه أي يا إبراهيم قد صدقت الرؤيا. You have proved that you want to fulfill the commandments, which means your what? نية attitude action was according. إما جاءوا فديناه بذبح عظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى سند رانسون like a fidya. Okay, ذبح great goats instead of that. Now the idea. Be careful, please. This is a special revelation between Allah and prophets and messengers. This is not applicable on, but Allah is telling us about this. Now, our point that we will deal, and we are dealing with Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam, now, for us, it's a matter of faith. Jews believe that they are the closest to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Christians believe that they are the closest. We believe that we are the closest. Now, Okay, who's the closest? I don't care what others think. If you want to know what you should be believing in, this is what Quran is telling you. Now, debating with others how to prove or to disprove, this is another story, okay? Now, it's good just to know, in case if someone asks you or before someone asks you, you, you for yourself, you need to know what is the status of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He's Khalilullah. <laughs> Why do we respect him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising him. We will be listening now. How do we look at him? He is one of the big heads of Muslims during the history. To whom we belong, we belong to Ibrahim. How do what we do we consider Ibrahim Muslim? Literally Muslim. 
What's the proof? Let's listen what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you believe if you believe in the Quran, by the way, it's a matter of faith now. Because this cannot be proved scientifically in the lab. Be careful. We are not discussing in chemistry now. We are not discussing if, if, about physics. It's a matter of faith. So it's about, how can I prove, how, how can I know who's, who's right and who's wrong? It's, this is another discussion. Complete another discussion. Now, we are in a, now we are in the stage of knowing what to adapt. We are, we are acquiring knowledge now, not how to prove the origins of the faith. I'm not, I'm not addressing atheists now. Do you have atheists here, by the way? Seriously, I'm all asking. Do we have non-believers in Islam sitting now? So, so, I'm, so our attitude basically, you know, the approach is what? Speaking with believers. So it's a matter of acquiring knowledge now, not proving to you how that Islam is truth, uh, the truth or not, okay? Look, now in light of this, let's see verse by verse what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighted Ibrahim alayhi salam in the context of this is uh, verse number, I forgot the number, it's 114, 115? I think 114. Anyway. وإذ ابتلى إبراهيم ربه بكلمات فأتمهن قال إني جاعلك للناس إماما قال ومن ذريتي قال لا ينال عهد الظالمين Remember when Abraham was tested by his Lord with certain commandments Some of them we have highlighted now which he fulfilled فأتمهن So now we can understand part of the law of Allah your status will be much higher when you are commanded and you fulfill. It's not just a wishful thinking and love in the heart. You know, when you have the feelings without fulfilling, without doing as long as no obstacles in your face, this is not tasdeeq. Tasdeeq, what is the tasdeeq? What is the tasdeeq? Yes, moving from the theory into what? the practice. This is a tasdiq. When you do the affirmation, the confirmation, okay? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, certain commandment which he fulfilled. Allah said, I will certainly make you into a role model, a leader for people. So, he was gifted. Because he fulfilled, and by the way, I'm giving you a law now. If you want to be a role model, if you want to be a leader and to take the edge of the people to take higher from you, one of the great lines, great rules when Allah commands fulfill. Next step, Allah will honor you to be a role model for others. Which means if this area has not been filled, nothing will happen later. Qala inni ja'iluka lil nasi. Imam, I will certainly make you into a role model or a leader for the people. Abraham asked, what about my offspring? Immediately, the mercy in him. <laughs> he is keen, you know, he's feeling, having this kind of feeling. He would love this khair of being a role model to be applied into his offspring immediately. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, God, my covenant is not extended to the wrongdoers. If they do not follow what you do, they don't deserve. And this is one of the biggest, greatest, direct war against racism. They are not racist. The son of a prophet does not deserve to be praised if he is a wrongdoer. Because even if he is the son of a prophet, Got my point? By the way, no one fights racism by its all types and forms like Muslims. Look, look to the role. That is for you. We'll bring it to me. That is for you. Zakumullah khairan. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, what I was saying. Ah, the idea of racism. 
He is in the highest level. He is Khalilullah. He fulfilled. He did. He applied. He fulfilled. Ya Allah, my son. No. Wrong doors will not be covered by the divine insurance. Wallahi al al You know, the insurance is not extended. Yani. By the way, you must know this because this will give you the power of Islam that it's a universal human religion. Ya Fatimata bint Muhammad la ughni anki min Allah shay'a. Wallahi law anna Fatimata bint Muhammad sarqat la qata'a Muhammad yadaha. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave a khutbah. He was addressing his people, you know, especially Banu Hashim, his relatives. He said, one part of this khutbah, he says, O oh, Fatima, the closest of his sons and to his, so to his heart. You know, it's, it's his peace of his heart. Fatima, radiallahu anha. He said, O oh, Fatima, I can't, I can't prevent, you know, the anger of Allah against you if you do not deserve it. Wallahi, if my daughter Fatima committed a theft, Wallahi, I, as a prophet Muhammad, will chop her hand, which means... Mafi, no exceptions, justice, no racism. I am the son of the great leader. La Habibi, if you deserve, and this was applicable in Islam. You know the story of the Coptic who was, yani, who felt, you know, injustice by the son of the uh, Amr ibn al-As in Egypt. When he went to Amr al-Khattab, he traveled from Egypt to Medina just to complain against the son of the leader, you know, they were competing in horses or whatever. When he won the Christian Coptic against the son of the leader of Muslims at that time, he slapped him in his face. He traveled for, you know, I don't know, I don't know what's exactly where he was, but definitely hundreds of miles through the sea as well. He went to Amr al-Khattab. Amr al-Khattab asked the son of Amr ibn al-As to come. Have you done it? Yes. He said, slap him. And he said, the word which is part of the constitutions of all countries on earth now. And he gave him the slap. He took his rights. He returned back his pride to him. His rights. He was a Christian. He was what? A Christian, not a Muslim. Look to the justice of Islam. This is a message for the hate, people who hate Islam and try to, to destroy the image. At that time, no one with different religion was facing one million percent of this justice on earth at that time. Anyway, he said his very well-known word, By the way, this is the best and first and the oldest recorded what? Declaration of human rights. <laughs> Ahrara, since when he's addressing the son of the governor of Egypt at that time, in the Islamic empire at that time. Since when you have enslaved the people, even though every one of them is born free. At that time, I challenge anyone, 1400 years ago, if you can prove to me that there is a freedom for slaves on earth at that time, I'm ready to give up Islam. What did the Khalifa say? Which means you are born whole, you are born free. You know, just just tens of years ago, United States started getting rid of slavery. You know this. Tens, not hundreds. Tens. Just tens. By the way, up to the early 60s and 70s, still some places in the United States, some places, sign no, no admission for black people. You know, just early 50s and 60s, the buses, the, 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 the main the, uh, transportation, big buses, when you get in there, as if you are a black, you are not allowed to sit with the next to I'm talking about 60s and 50s, 70 years ago, just. We Muslims should be proud that 1400 years ago, now, by the way, all of this, it comes under what? Ya Allah, Ya Allah, thank you, Ya Allah. 
you, you gave me this status. What about my offspring? My covenant will not cover. My insurance of this respect, praise, high status will not cover any wrongdoer. Which means if you do wrong, you will be punished. That's it. This is justice. This is a human right. This is the power of the state. This is the real democracy. <laughs> Wallahi, it's not just... I will not discuss democracy now, okay? It's better. <laughs> just to keep giving the lesson, inshallah. <laughs> okay. وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنَا وَاتَّخِذُوا مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى وَعَهِدْنَا إِلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ أَنْ ضَهِرَ بَيْتِيَ لِلطَّائِفِينَ وَالْعَاكِفِينَ وَالْرُكَعِ السُّجُودِ And remember, when we made this sacred house a center and a sanctuary, like a haven or a refuge for the people saying, you may take the standing place of Abraham as a site of prayer. This is part of our faith. Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now, historically, we, we don't have a clear-cut evidence when this happened. According to the biblical records, Ibrahim alayhi salam lived 3,900 years from now. About 4,000 years. Uh, biblical records. Old Testament, okay? Not Islamic, and we don't know. Maybe, maybe it's more than four, maybe less. I have no idea. According to the historical <coughs> records depending on the bible it's two uh, it's uh, 1900 years before christ so it's about 4000 years more or less now so at that time our faith allah tells us in the quran that ibrahim alayhi salam he was started putting the foundation with ismail alayhi salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says remember when we made the sacred house mecca a center and a haven, a refuge for the people. The decision has been made that this is the house of Allah 4,000 years ago. <laughs> okay? You may take the standing place of Abraham. Ibrahima Musalla. Go there and pray. And we entrusted Abraham and Ishmael to purify my house for those who circle it, who meditate in it and who bow and prostrate themselves in prayer. Now, this is another evidence about the relation between us and Ibrahim, and Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail, they were doing Urku and sujood like, like us exactly. The ta'ifid wa ruka as sujood. So regardless, okay, do we have historical records? I don't care to have historical records. This is your problem, not mine. For me, if Allah told me, I believe it. That's it, khalas. Go, go and check with your historical records. That's not my problem, it's your problem. Are you with me? Because once you want to check historical records, our Quran is the best historical record, <laughs> scientifically speaking. <laughs> and by the way, the Hadith Sahih and Mutawatir is one of the best after the Quran on the history of humanity of historical records as well. Because by the way, others, they don't have the authenticity that we have. So what historical record? Do you mean to have, for example, a stone that is written in hieroglyphic, for example? Okay. How do you know? They found it. Okay. Did you find it yourself? Have you witnessed this scientifically? No. They told you through French, uh, for example, uh, documentary or BBC documentary, and they were found, blah, 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 blah. Ooh, and I saw it in the website. Really? So the website is your historical uh, evidence. Good, my point? <laughs> So, if you want to talk about history, I don't care. I'm telling you what the Quran says. The Quran is indicating that Ibrahim salam and Ismail, they were commanded to purify the Kaaba for Ruka al sujood So, the concept of Ruku and sujood since then, it's part of Islam and Muslims. Okay? Okay. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ اجْعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا وَارْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ مَنْ آمَنَ مِنْهُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ قال وَمَنْ كَفَرْ فَأُمَتِّعُهُ قَلِيلًا ثُمَّ أَطَّرُهُ إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ النَّارِ وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ And remember, when Abraham said, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is telling us about the conversation that happened between Allah and Ibrahim alayhi salam. By the way, we have uh, a lot about this, like what happened between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Iblis. Why Allah is telling us about this? We know about many details. Listen for us. 
Why Allah is showing us? Why Allah is uncovering this secret that happened? Which is, Allah knows when. We don't know. Millions of years ago, we have no idea. It's the, the, the beginning of Adam. We have no idea. 200,000 years ago, 100,000, half a million. Allah knows. We don't know. Allah is telling us what happened. Iblis, ya Iblis, wa ana'aka lam akum yasun bil bashar khalaqtahu min salsala min hama al masmur. Ana khayru min wa bu'izzatika la'u yannuhum ajma'in wa la'atiyan. All of these things. Why Allah is telling these details for us? Why? Road map for you. Listen. Regulations. This is your enemy. This is your friend. This is the golden rules. Be careful. Apply this. Fulfill this. Be careful. This is the constitution. <laughs> this is the map. Be careful. Hot points. Be careful. Easy. Red. Green. Yellow. White. <laughs> Whatever. You see? What, what, why do you have the map, basically? Why do we use Lillahi al What is the point that we use Google Maps? To show us how to reach our destination. True or false? True or false? <laughs> Quran is Lillahi al Our Yes, GPS. Quran is our GPS. Now, turn right. Be careful. Stop now. Indeed, road. Turn left. <laughs> this is the divine GPS of humanity. However, anyone accept it become from the community of Muslims because Islam is not for a race. Anyone, anyone accept Islam immediately, you will be part of this universal community. You need to know this, by the way. By the way, when non-Muslims know these facts about Islam, Wallahi, they will be proud to be part of it. But many of them, they don't know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, They don't know. Because of the media, because of the obstacles. However, time. Remember when Abraham said, My Lord, make this, this city of Mecca secure and provide fruits to its people. Those among them who believe in Allah on the last day, look to the centrality and the big bones and ties between Allah and Yawm Al-Akhir. By the way, when Iman is mentioned in the Quran in tens of places, يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْأَخِرَ Look, in many times, when belief in Allah is mentioned, hardly you can find, very important point, hardly the belief in Allah is mentioned without Yawm Al-Akhir. This is basic. Allah Yawm Al-Akhir, Allah Yawm Al-Akhir, Allah Yawm Al-Akhir, Allah Yawm Al-Akhir. Why? Nothing makes any sense on earth now if you don't believe in Yom Al-Akhir, by the way. Nothing! Because you need to know, we live this worldly life. Then we have the Barzakh, the barrier. When we have Na'im Al-Qabr, the pleasure, the happiness of the grave. And we have Adab Al-Qabr as well, which is just a part of waiting till what? Al-Akhirah, the hereafter. It starts with the Day of Judgments. يوم القيامة which will take thousands of years خمسين ألف سنة it's amazing then after that we have final destination eternal so we are living here can you imagine just here then the barzakh then eternal if you are living here if all of your criterion to judge whatever happens to you is limited to this Maybe, maybe you will think it's better to commit suicide and get rid of this life. <laughs> Which is prohibited in Islam. Because does that make sense? Because if you believe that Allah does exist, why by the way, it's very central. If you believe that Allah does exist, and many nonsense things happen from your point of view. Many traitors, zalimeen, transgressors, wrongdoers, they did a lot of bad things and just they disappeared without accountability. <laughs> If there is no accountability, that's why the Day of Judgment, we call it Yawm al Hisab. The Day of Accountability. You will be accountable. When you put all this in Allah, alhamdulillah. That's why the lowest rate of suicide committing on earth among true believers. Who are they? You know them. The true believers, the believers who believe in the Akhirah, the true Akhirah, he knows whatever you miss, you will have it there with the full package about Islam. So now let's come back. Look. 
وارزق اهله من الثمرات من امن منهم بالله واليوم الاخر please fix this in your mind when you deal with the people you have laws haram halal right wrong good bad keep doing you will be rewarded initially with some sides and you might lose some many things sumayya radiyallahu anha you know sumayya you know who sumayya who sumayya the first martyr shahida in islam did she witness any kind of victory of muslims so mathematically from materialistic point of view she's a loser true or false she did not witness hamza radiyallahu anhu did he witness the victory of muslims no and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did he see what the abbasid and umayyad and the ottomans did no so please be careful about this point and remember when abraham said my lord make the city of mecca secure and provide fruits to its people those among them who believe in allah and the last day or the hereafter he answered as for those who disbelieve i will now we have a new law allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the conversation is telling us okay ya allah give those who believe in you and the, uh, after the fruits and give them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say oh, yes however Allah is telling Ibrahim from your offspring from the people some people will reject me woman kafar and I explained to you many times what does the word kafara mean kafara means to to reject okay to deny while you are aware of the truth okay so woman kafara on he answered as for those who disbelieve i will let them enjoy themselves for a little while then i will condemn them to the torment of the fire what an evil destination this is a law this is a law قانون. i will let them enjoy be careful don't be miss guided when you see wrong doors bad people are enjoying this dunya be careful don't misunderstand allah part of the law of allah allah provides us with ni'am with blessings provides us with and he equipped us with the power of intellect reasoning we understand we feel we realize and he sends to us messages through the prophets messengers understanding lessons videotapes clips reading books hearing stories friends colleagues incidents all of these are what messages of reminders be careful be careful now when i decide that i don't want to listen which means i reject i'm considered linguistically and terminologically in islam what kafir قال ومن كفر فأمتعه وات قليلا ثم أضطره إلى عذاب النار وبئس المصير. so this is the law please. now this is our law with Allah. do the good you will be rewarded. might just partially in this dunya the full reward is there. طب why this bad guy even do he's doing he's enjoying his life be careful. This is the end of his time, and it's part of the fitna, part of the test. It's like Fir'aun, uh, uh, by the way, this is mentioned clearly in Surah Al-An'am. Hafiz al-Quran, remind me of the verse. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمَّمٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْبَأْسَائِ وَضْبْ أَوَلْ مَنْشِنْ The ayat very quickly, I will give the idea of this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قَالْ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ وَاتْ أُمَتِّعُهُ قَلِيلًا Anyone who disbelieve, anyone who reject, anyone who is arrogant with Allah. By the way, this is applicable on individual level, small groups, big groups, umma level, humanity level. The same law. Woman kafara umatti'uhu. If you are as an individual, decided to reject Allah, and Allah will give you chance number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hundred, whatever. When your time is finished, you will be transferred to a new category. The category is 
ta'tiruhu. Allah will let you enjoy little. When you are in the top, Allah will chop you while you are in the top. This is the law of Allah, not mine. By the way, this is not a conclusion from me. Literally, the Quran says this. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمَمٍ How many of you understand Arabic? Very quickly, just. Please raise up your hand, Arabic. Okay. I will say it in Arabic, then I will say the core point in English. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمَمٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَضَرَّعُوا وَلَكِنْ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حتى إذا فرحوا بما أوتوا وخذناهم بقت فإذا هم مبلسون فقطع وقطع فقطع ولا وقطع فقطع دابر القوم الذين ظلموا والحمد لله رب العالمين. This is called قانون الاستدراج the law of استدراج. By the way, it has no translation. It's a terminology. The meaning Allah سبحانه وتعالى says my law my سنة during the history for the people that I used to send hardship, troubles, obstacles, to push the people to come back to me, to repent. Because when you are weak, by the way, any one of us, even if you are arrogant, if you have a problem, doing a lot of bad things, once you go to the hospital, I know myself. I, I will say, hey, we will know our places. If you are doing a lot of bad things, for example, for, example, for men, if the one of us is not paying any attention to the haram porno sites. Haram, who cares? Us, I will repent inshallah at in the age of 60, inshallah. Okay, I don't pray, for example. Why? Yeah, I mean, inshallah, when I become uh, very old, I will repent and go to the hajj and the whatever. Now, once I have a car accident, I lost one of my eyes. I can't move both of my hands. And one of my legs, I can't go in the hospital to the washroom without the help of three nurses. At that time, if someone came and reminded me about, oh, hey, would you like to watch porno? Do you think I will let, do it? Do you think I will do it? Fine. Would like to pray? Ya Allah. Ya Allah. <laughs> ya Allah. This is the nature of us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, with difficulties, what is, what is the main aim of Ba'sa and Barra? The hardships, what is the main aim? لَعَلَّهُمْ So that they may humble themselves and come to us repenters. Okay? قَالْ فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَضَرَّعُوا Allah is saying, فَلَوْلَا It means هَلَّا يعني بالعربي البسيط يَا رَيْتْهُمْ لَمَّ صَارْ مَعْهُمْ كَذَا How, yeah, As if Allah is saying, I wish when I put them in this I will not force them because it's their decision. They came back to us. ولكن قصت قلوبهم. They're hard. They were hardened. قال وزين. Look, قصت قلوبهم وزين. Mr. Iblis will come next. Be careful because we, especially in the Arabic language, we do disasters. Allah يلعن الشيطان. We we don't we we do the bad things. We do the zulm. We spread whatever. Every time we just say, "Asbi Allah, Allah يلعن الشيطان." يا عم الشيطان will come next. Shaitan is number two. I am number one. I take a decision. Allah will remind me. The fitra, the inner nature will keep fighting against me. Allah will establish the argument against me with what we call it, the conscious from inside. When I refuse, 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 and I decide to take, Mr. Iblis will come and say, hello, thank you for the good decision. We are partners now. Yalla. What do you would like to say? Wallahi, this is, this is the law. Shaitan will not force me. And by the way, by the way, be aware that we are much more powerful than Iblis and the Jinn. In the Qaeda, Shaitan ikana ba'ifa, the Qaid, the Makr, the planning. You know, the secret planning of the Bashar is much more powerful than the Jinn and the Shayateen. Wallahi. One of the examples, remind me where I left, okay? One of the examples I used to tell my students at the university. I said, look, if, if, a young man with the age of 20, in his second or third year in the university, he's struggling about haram and halal. Boyfriend, girlfriend, going there, you know, going to night clubs, drinking alcohol, doing bad things, doing bad stuff. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. 
Iblis has just one channel of power, which is whispering. Yani imagine I'm that person now. I'm struggling, like, haram, halal, yes, no, my mother is making dua for me, I'm just, please don't do this and such. For example, in the Friday, uh, you know, I hear something, I hear, you know, I'm about to, uh, yes, no, yes, no, I'm struggling now. Iblis will come and do whispering. Once I say astaghfirullah, or I do tasbih, or I started doing the wudu, or I do the salah, Iblis will have less power or will disappear. True or false? Yeah. Right. Let's see shayatin al ins the Satan of the human beings, my friend, for example, one of my friends. Shaitan, whisper, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. I open the Quran, khalas. Okay, maybe a few days later I have a bad exam, a bad uh, test, for example, or something, a bad experience. I'm in a difficult situation, you will come whispering. Maybe when I pray the jama'ah, khalas. I cancel the influence. Let's see shaitan lens. Shaitan lens, for example. Hey, we have a mixed party. Come with us. Look, I don't have new clothes to go. I will give you my suit. I can't pay the ticket. I will pay it. I don't have perfume. I will give you mine. And by the way, you know Jessica? Many times she mentioned you. She's really in love with you. I, I believe. Wallahu alam. Wallahu alam. She's in love with you. Wallahu alam. Wallahu alam. Wallahu alam. What? Yes, all the time she's mentioning that she would love really to have a time with you. Really? Yes, and by the way, as a gift from me, my sports car will give it to you at that night when you take her to the nightclub. Top, can you please do this? Well, I'm not joking. Can you please give me his car? My who going to say, Ya Raslan? Iblis just whispers. Wallahi, Iblis, that's why. That's why be careful. I mean, I mean, it's just an example. An example about I mean, my point is when taking the decision. My, my point is, فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَعْسُنَا تَضَرَّعُوا ya Allah would love us when He sends the kind of difficulties to go immediately to the humbling ourselves. وَلَكِنْ قَسَتْ قُلُوهُمْ This is my point. So this is a decision of mine. Be careful. No one says, Allah قَدَّرْلِي What can I do? Gilbi Gassi. No, this is my decision. My decision. Fa? Now, Qasat Kulubuhum, then Iblis comes. Wa Zayyan Rahum Shaytan Makanu Yamalu. Falamma, now, Nasu Madukirubihi. Now, literally, it says when they forget. But this is, this is a metaphorical, Rhetorical usage, هذا استخدام بلاغي. يعني إحنا we use it now in our slang language. لما نحكي, for example, we say, hey, we have an appointment with our friend. He said, forget him. Forget him means what? Punch him. Why punch him? Ignore him. Neglect. Neglect him. Forget does not mean I have forgotten really, which means I don't care. قال فلما نسوا نسوا does not mean forget literally. It means what? Neglected, deliberately ignored, completely. They took the decision. Allah decided, this is my point, which is related to our ayah today. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say in our ayah here? In Surah Al Anam, in Surah Al Anam, in Surah Al فتحنا عليهم أبواب كل شيء. We will open the gates of everything. قال حتى إذا فرحوا فرحوا means they became arrogant. فرحوا not does not mean they they became happy. The فرح means تكبر هي. In this Quranic terminology. فلما تكبر became arrogant أخذناهم بقتة. We will destroy them out of a sudden. And this is part of the policy. Or the law of Allah in dealing with the ظالمين, the trans, etc. قال فأمتعوا قليلا ثم أطره إلى عذاب النار وبئس المصير. He answered, as for for those who disbelieve, I will let them enjoy themselves for a little while. Then I will condemn them to the torment of the fire. What an evil destination! وإذ يرفع إبراهيم القواعد من البيت وإسماعيل ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم. And remember, when Abraham raised the foundation of the house with Ishmael, both praying, Our Lord, accept this from us. 
You are indeed the all hearing, all knowing. In another translation by Fadl Suleiman. And recall Abraham raising the foundations of the house together with Ishmael. Our Lord accept it from us. Indeed, it is you alone who are the all hearing, all knowing. Rabbana, now, wajalna muslimaini laka wa min durriyatina ummata muslimata laka wa arina manasikana wa tub alayna innaka anta tawab rahim. Our Lord, make us both fully submit to you. Another translation, our Lord, make us both Muslim to you and from your, from our descendants, a nation that will submit to you. Show us our rituals and turn to us in grace. You are truly the acceptor of repentance, most merciful. Our Lord, and make us both Muslim to you and from our offspring, a Muslim community submitting to you and show us our rights and grant us repentance and accept it from us indeed. It is you alone who are the superb grantor and acceptor of repentance, the best hour, the best hour of mercy. Now, this is the genius wisdom of the divine wisdom in, in the name of Islam. Now, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah, by the way, maybe, maybe some people will tell me, hey, was Ibrahim speaking Arabic? Was he speaking Arabic? I'm asking, do you know if he was speaking Arabic? We don't know for sure. Historically, he was supposed to speak the language of or all the Kildanians or the Iraqi or the Samiri or whatever. They have, look, 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 you are saying, he said, there is a translation. The concept of Islam, regardless of the translation, we are talking about submission. And this is, the, the, let's say, the, the divine wisdom of the name of Islam. By the way, it's good to know the following now. Judaism was named after the tribe of Judah. Okay? Christianity was named after Jesus Christ. For them, the Son of God or God's incarnate. Islam was not named after Muhammad. <coughs> It was not named after Arab. Our religion's name is not Arabism, Muhammadism. We don't have it. Our, the religion of our name is what? Islam. Translated to any language, the meaning is submission. To submit yourself to the will of your Lord in his last testament with humanity. Good my point? So definitely, he was speaking another language. In his language, وَجْعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ He was saying in his language, Oh Allah, let me be from those who submit. Submit to what? Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Allah, وَمَا كَانَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ مَا الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ Whatever. If Allah said, right, right, left, left, stop, stop. This is, this is the point. And this is what we were just highlighting. So the idea, submission. Submission to the will of your Lord. So here comes why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was praising the great Sahaba at the very beginning. The one of them, we have many incidents by the way, many incidents on prophets, messengers, and Sahaba. But about the Sahaba, when can you imagine when the Khamar, when the alcohol was prohibited in the five, third stage, according to the hadith? Sorry. قال فسالت الخمر في شوارع المدينة. Can you imagine a nation like all other nations on earth? By the way, alcohol and al khamar, it was part of the tradition of the people on earth. When Islam came and prohibited this for the Arabs, Arabs like many other nations, they were addict to alcohol. It's not just addict. It's part of what? Industry. By the way, by the way, logically, is it true that alcohol, through driving at least, or the problems of hitting or making, you know, violence because of alcohol, is it one of the major reasons for violence and killing or not? Logically, for civilized people, they should what? Prohibit alcohol. Practically, 
no one dares even to discuss this. Why? Because the drive is not the maslaha. The drive is the benefit and the shahwa. That's why we need the divine law. Or otherwise, mathematically, okay, we say it's a business. It's a business. It's industry. It's a multi what? Billion? Trillions business. So I'm just telling you, when you go back then, Arabs, like all other nations, from one angle, it's part of their economy. <laughs> and it's part of their pleasure. Just to drink and enjoy. Okay? Time. Step number one, you know it. Wala taqrabu salata wa antum? Sukara. Sorry, this is step two. It was step one. Now, read khal inna mal khamr wal maysir wal ansab wal azlamu rinsun min afad jtanibu. And the word jtanibu is ten times more more severe than haram. Because ijtinab means it's haram to buy it, haram to sell it, haram to hold it, haram to drink it, haram to sit to someone next to someone who's drink it, haram to bring it to someone, haram to give the fruit like the grape to the factory which manufactures the haram. All of them, they are cursed by ijtinibu. I mean, the point, once the commandment came, look, it's a culture. They were born since tens of years. Yani al-ada is very powerful, it's custom, they always drink. The revelation came. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu told the Sahaba, spread in the Medina. They did not come to check Prophet Muhammad. Khalas, ya nas, you know the people started screaming, it's prohibited. Immediately, everyone has a big jar, big tankers, big whatever. They start to open the main gates of the streets and to throw the liquid of the khabar. قال فسارت الخمر في شوارع أزقة المدينة. يما to a degree it became like a full of mud, like as if that a small spring of liquid. Which means my point. When Allah commands, when you know, you don't know. Allah said this is haram. You were not aware that this is not acceptable. For example, out of sudden, really this haram? Yes. Sure. From a trust. Yes. خلاص. استغفر الله العظيم. That's it. I did not know. This is the truth. Muslim. The true was submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the big relation between us and Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi ma as-salam. قَالْ وَجْعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِنَا رَبَّنَا Now let's come to this. And maybe I will highlight, I will remind you about, I think I did it in the seerah. Allah continues in the Quran saying what Ibrahim and Ismail said. رَبَّنَا وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ By the way, how many of you Attend the Sira session with me. Taqriban 40% from the exit. Right. I will give you just very quickly now. And remind me, those who attended with me, because it was in another session. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Ibrahim and Ismail, they were saying the following dua. Rabbana wab'ath fihim rasoolan min hum. يتلو عليهم آياتك ويعلمهم الكتابة والحكمة ويزكيهم إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم. Literally, Allah says Ibrahim was making the following dua: O Lord, raise from among them a messenger who will recite to them your revelation, teach them the book and wisdom and purify them. Indeed, you alone are the Almighty, all wise. When you go. And read in the Bible, you will find a very, very similar text in the book of John. Sorry. <coughs> this is in the New Testament, in the Old Testament. I, I forgot the book, but if you can remind me, those who were att attended with me. They have a very similar text which is attributed to in the Bible. That there was a praising or color to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that so that not to make a mistake. Let me open the file, it's the mistake. Give me just one one minute. Wait. I will open the file of the Sira and I will quote the exact the best thing. Okay. 
Was it the, the last or before the last? Before the last. Was it in the Sira or the, the Tafsir? Sira. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 18, 18. 18, 18. Ah, 18, 18, Deuteronomy. Yeah. Okay. C can you give me the text? I don't want to miss quotes. Uh, raise up a prophet like Musa from their brethren. Put my words in. Uh, put his words in my mouth. Azakallah khair. From the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament when Allah was speaking with Musa alayhi salam. It's in the Bible. Okay, please uh, read it again. I don't have the exact text. I have it here. Yes, please. I don't want to miss quotes. Uh, uh, God says in their Bible. God says in the Bible addressing Musa. Okay? Uh, I will raise them up. I, I will repeat. I will raise them up. A prophet from among their brethren. A prophet. Look, Allah is addressing Musa now. Musa is the messenger of the people of Israel. Allah tells Musa, I will raise among them from their brethren. Okay? A prophet. Continue. Like, like unto thee. Like unto thee means in the old classical English, like you. Like you. Allah is addressing who? Musa. Musa. Allah says, I will raise a prophet from their <laughs> brothers, who are the brothers of the offspring of Ishaq. Ismail. Ismail. I will raise a prophet like you. Continue. And will put my words in his mouth. And will put my words in his mouth. He will be coming with a word. <laughs> Quran. <laughs> You see, I will put my words in his mouth. Subhanallah. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command. And he shall speak unto them all what I command him. Now, when some Christians try to translate this, they said, okay, who is this prophet? I mean, I can't say Isa is a prophet. <laughs> because they don't really believe that Isa is what? I mean, for Christians now. Who is... Um, by the way, this verse, Jews and Christians, they are facing a very difficult time with this verse, by, by the way, in the, in, the, in the Old Testament. Because literally, if you remember, I made a comparison between Musa, Isa, and Muhammad. Because the text says, I will raise among them from their brothers a prophet like you. Now, Muhammad and Musa, both of them, they were married and they have children. Isa, alayhi salam, no marriage, no children. Muhammad and Musa, both of them, they had a natural birth. Isa alayhi salam, no natural birth. Muhammad and Musa, both of them, they established the concept of the beginning of a state and they had enemies and they fought in wars and they killed their enemies. Musa and, which means both of them, they were state men. Isa alayhi salam came no states, no fights, no, pol no, 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 no politics at all. <laughs> but Musa and Muhammad, both of them, they came with a full sharia, full law. Isa alayhi salam came just for three years to fix the direction of the people of Israel as a reformer. <laughs> so you can keep going about, I gave you, I think, ten, ten. Ten differences, which means the text says, I will raise a prophet like you. Who is like Musa, Isa or Muhammad? Ah, and at that time, if you remember, we, we quoted this ayah. Ibrahim says, وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ <laughs> Now this exact incident, which happened 4,000 years, it happened... According to the Torah, even though we do not give authenticity for the nowadays Torah, however, there is a possibility that some text is still in its original status. 
This happened between Musa and Allah 3,400 years ago. Still, I will raise up from their brothers a prophet like you. And I put my words in his mouth. By the way, look how accurate the text is. Because Musa alayhi salam, he was given the tablets. He was given what? Tablets. And you know, Musa alayhi salam was facing a problem in his uttering the words. Musa alayhi salam was not given a powerful in the words. He was given a written commandments. So look to the accuracy of, the, of, of differences. I will put words into his mouth. What was the miracle of Prophet Muhammad? Quran. He was what? Illiterate. He can't read. He can't write. <laughs> By the way, this verse alone is enough for anyone who's seeking the truth to accept Islam. It's in Deuter Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. Yes. Yes. One? 1880. 1880. No. I'm talking, it's a chapter and a verse. You said 1880. No, no. Yes. 1818. 1818, yes. You know, no, no. It's, it's, it's the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 18, verse 18. Yes. Uh -huh. So, okay. Now, this is, please keep it in your mind because you never know. Maybe you have friends, colleagues, very close. People to your house. They are asking. See, by the way, there are thousands looking, searching, seeking. Sometimes when you have the knowledge, at least you, at least you be the bridge. Just tell them, okay, I have no power to force anyone to accept or to refuse. However, if you are, we are in an open society. You can access, you know, knowledge through the internet easily. But you have a lot of misguidance in the internet as well. And you have a lot of hatred for Muslims and a lot of liars against Muslims. You don't know when you go and search, if you are an unbeliever, who will be in your face, who will be filling your mind with a lot of filthy, dirty, bad lies against Islam and Muslims. So if you came in his or her face, okay, at least seeking, at least what I know, explain to this. Open the book, open it. Look, this is in your book. What do you think about this? And by the way, this is one of the other. But let me tell you something. Now, apart from this, in case, in case, it's, it's an advice. In case if you don't want to waste your time with if this kind of details, the Deuteronomy, the book of Genesis 18, 17, 17, 14, book of John, chapter, uh, gospel of... No, no, okay. Maybe you don't like, you can't memorize, you will not be able to debate. Just, I will advise you with one file to take care of it. One file. Just to prove the power of Islam. Just, just go and read about the scientific miracles that is mentioned in the Quran. Islam, sorry, Quran contains 6,000, around 6,300 verses with 114 chapters, around 94,000 words, 1,000 verses, they contain information about what we know now as science. You just read some of them, have an idea about some of them. If anyone asks you about the possibility, the validity, the authenticity, of possibility rejecting accepting Islam just raise the following idea in his or her uh, face just he said look I know you as an agnostic as an atheist as whatever with all due respect for everyone you have a bad idea about my religion you just give me an answer where did this desert man i.e. Muhammad as they claim was able to know the following things in this book 1400 years ago you just go and search. And one of the examples that, uh, by the way, maybe I said it 10 times here, and I will repeat it for the 11 or the 15 now, and I will finish my talk with that. Please go and listen to the YouTube to Richard Varley. Richard Varley. Richard Varley was a colonel officer in the British police about 32, 33 years ago. When the pro problem of Salman Rushdie, when he wrote his book against Islam and Muslims, Muslims in the UK in 1989, they were doing some kind of, you know, marches in the streets, you know, demonstrating against, you know, this book because it was published and unfortunately it was praised by high authorities in the UK at that time. Anyway, at that time, Richard Varley, he was an officer 
in the special unit of uh, counter, uh, the special unit for encountering terrorism in the UK. They asked him to take care of the people in the streets. He knew that the people who will demonstrate in the streets are what? Muslims. He knows nothing about Islam. At that time, no satellite channels, no internet, nothing. The only thing to know about Muslims was to read a copy from the Quran. Now, what I will tell you, you can see it on the YouTube. They interviewed him about seven, ten years ago, he himself. He's, I think, in his late, late 60s, early 70s. He's saying what I will be telling you exactly by his own words on a special uh, London TV for uh, Al Hiwar, I think. Anyway, look what he said. He said, I have my major, I have double major in physics and geology. He said, when I was about to take this mission to take of the people of the street possible counter-terrorism, <laughs> Muslims, he said, I started reading in the Quran. Because I studied geology and physics, I came across a verse, it stopped me. What was this verse? قال, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَا رَتْقًا فَفَتَّقْنَاهُمَا وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْ Have not the disbelievers witnessed that heavens and earth, they were one mass and we split them into pieces? He said, this is exactly what we have studied just a few years ago about the Big Bang Theory <laughs> in physics. He said, how come... This desert man was mentioning something has to do that the origin of the universe it was just one thing that was split by the explosion. Kanata ratkan fafatqnahuma. Okay, but, okay. He just put a note. He kept reading. He came to قول الله تعالى والسماء بنيناها بأيد وإنا لموسعون. He said, you know, I, I, I was astonished. He said, you know, the telescope of Hubble. About 100 years ago, just 100 years ago, they, just 100 years ago, they discovered the universe is expanding. Just 100 years ago. And by the way, we have many verses. Allah did not swear by the stars. He sweared by the location of the stars. Who knew on earth that what we receive, the image of the light, is for a star that has been demolished and it disappeared billions of years ago and we are receiving the light now. <laughs> Who knew this? Who knew? Yeah, I, mean, I mean from the human beings, no one. We, are, we have just discovered this now, now in these decades. And we are expanding. Then he was shocked second time. The third one, he declared Islam. And I will tell you what he said. Third one, he came, uh, cha, cha, I forgot the surah, قال, والجبال, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we have created the mountains as widges or pigs. You know what that? Now, and he said, my major is geology. This incident happened to him in 1989. He said, we have just discovered in early, I think, 60s, which means just 20 years ago, that if you have a cross, cross section, cross section, yeah? You know, now just early 60s, they discovered that the earth, you know, when they discovered the lava and the, the layers of the rocks and the things that comes under just about 70 years ago, the details. He said, I have just studied this just a few years ago and we have discovered this early 60s. How did Muhammad, he did not say Muhammad, how did the Quran know this? Then he declared, he said, for me, this book is impossible to be from a human being. It must be from a divine being. Then he declared this one. I will give you just an idea. By the way, I gave you just three verses out of 1,000. By the way, most of the people, they love science. And they say, I believe in science. And by the way, all fiction movies, they depend on science as well. All fiction tricks, they depend on science, by the way. But I, this is not my point. People, they love science. Go to them from the area that they love, science. And if I kept just telling you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ذكروني حفظ القرآن قضية كأنما يصعد في السماء يجعل صدره ضيقا حرجا بدايتها يجعل صدره ضيقا حرجا كأنما يصعد في السماء 
انا دائما بتذكر موطن الشاهد وبنسى بدايه الايه بدايه الايه حفظ القران افمن شرح الله صدره للاسلام كمن فهو على فهو على نور من ربي فويل للقاسيه كله. نو نو مين يذكرني بسرعه؟ بسرعه. جست اي ويل فينش باي ان شاء الله. اعطيه ها؟ فمن يرد الله ان يهديه ويتنفس له الاسلام ومن يرد ان يضله يجعل صدره ضيقا حرجا. لوك يجعل ذا وان هو ديسايدد تو فورسيك الله تو ريجكت الله الله ويل بانش هيم by making look يجعل صدره ضيقا حرجا كانما يصعد في السماء الله سبحانه وتعالى is promising the one who decide to reject him he will be punishing him his heart his chest will be like someone who is ascending in the heavens when did we discover that whenever you go up you will have less oxygen when Yeah. You know, by the way, what happens to you when you go up? Why would you have oxygen in the airplanes always? Why the first thing they ask you if you have a problem? Immediately, oxygen mask. Why? Because if you go without oxygen, what will happen to you? It's like this, exactly. Why? The Quran mentioned this 1400 years ago. This is an indication that when you go up, you will have less oxygen. Who knew that? Four, just four. You keep, just go, just open this file in your mind, memorize at least 10 of them, understand them. When someone asks you about what's the proof that Islam is the whatever. And if you can print two pages, whoever asks you, say, please, go and read this. If you have an answer, you come, I'm ready. By the way, if you can prove to me that Islam is wrong, I'm ready to leave Islam. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اي ثينك وي هاف جست 5 مينتس ان شاء الله نيكست تايم وي ويل كونتينيو ويز ابراهيم عليه السلام جزاكم الله خير فور ليسنينج ثانك يو فيري ماتش السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته